What's going on guys, Crypto Renegade here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about Solana again, and this time in the ring against Cardano. In the last video, we tried to compare Solana and Polkadot, and which one of these was going to go for Ethereum's head. You should have gone for the head. In this video, however, we will see which one has a faster blockchain, Solana, or Cardano. Just a reminder that Solana climbed to a new all-time high just this past weekend, breaking the price of $42 per coin. We see Cardano at the price of around $1.53 as of shooting this video. Despite the lower coin price, Cardano currently stands at the fifth spot of cryptos with the largest market cap in the world. You know, sometimes that high price of Solana could be a downer, when it comes to stuff like market cap. That is why we see Solana at the 12th place currently in market cap. Anyway, instead of comparing their market caps as we did with Polkadot in the last video, today we are gonna compare their blockchains. Let's dive right into it. But before I jump into the content, I just updated my new free ebook on the seven best ways to secure your crypto updated for 2021. It's 100% free, so check it out in the description and it will also be pinned in the comments. All right, let's get started. One of the biggest problems in the crypto space is the agreement on time. I know, right? Who would have thought in the world of complex blockchains and algorithms that time would be the problem? The reason for this is because nodes in the network can't trust an external source of time or any timestamp that appears in a message. This can slow down the entire system and the number of transactions that can be processed per second, or TPS. But what if you didn't have to trust an external timestamp at all? Is there a way to prove that a transaction happened in between certain timeframes? Well, according to Solana, there is. They call it proof of history. So this system allows you to create a historical record that proves that an event occurred at a specific moment in time. On top of that, proof of history is also a decentralized clock that is built directly into the system. This is one of the main reasons why Solana can do 50,000 transactions per second compared to Ethereum that can only reach 30 transactions per second currently. I can already feel Ethereum starting to sweat here. You know, like you, these, these kinds of people, you know, the, you know the. Let's put things into perspective here, though. Did you know that Visa Credit Card Network currently clears 3,000 transactions per second? Now, they do have the capabilities to scale to 10,000 transactions per second, or even 65,000 when the demand is at its peak. Pretty impressive for the fiat children, but remembering that this is just another centralized network. Enter Solana. The most impressive part about these guys is that they can clear all of Visa's, MasterCard's, and PayPal's transactions without any issues. And they're doing it as a decentralized network. If that isn't mind blowing, I don't know what is. The key to being able to clear tens of thousands of transactions per second is that here is a leader to order and write the transactions in the network as fast as possible. On the Solana network, however, the leader changes all the time. The only limitation of how fast transactions can happen per second is based on the leader's hardware, which introduces a unique feature for scalability. Now, think about this. The faster the hardware becomes as the world's technology improves, the more transactions per second will be possible on the Solana network. But that leaves the question, how fast could the Solana network really get? And how about Cardano? Are they at risk by the come up of this young soul on a block? We'll try to answer all of that in this video. But first, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you do not lose another video with the latest news about rising new crypto projects. Cardano has a good advantage when it comes to blockchain. They consume only a fraction of the energy that Bitcoin and Ethereum do. Cardano is also an eco-friendly crypto, which consumes about the same amount of energy as 600 
US homes each year. Ethereum does have an upgrade in the works, which would cut its consumption by 99.95%. But Cardano's green credentials have been baked in from the start. Okay, we are here to mainly focus on speed, so better strap up because this might get very technical very quickly, but I'll try to make it as easy as possible. Cardano uses a layered blockchain to track transactions and store information. Blockchain ledgers are like very sophisticated databases built using interconnected blocks. Cardano's layers mean it's able to process transactions faster than many other cryptocurrencies. In fact, it will be faster than Visa's processing capabilities of 65,000 transactions per second. But before we go ahead and reveal all the secret cards of Cardano, let's go back to Solana for a second. Well, from Solana's white paper, we know that in theory, they're predicting to scale to 710,000 transactions per second. You heard that right, that's one gigabyte and that's per second. Divide that by 176 bytes and you get 710,000 transactions per second maximum. Hold your horses because I know that is a lot of numbers for you guys to process, but there's a reason I wanted to point this out. You see, Ethereum 2.0 is working to get to 100,000 transactions per second, which would be more than Solana as it is right now. However, Solana has a lot of potential to blow way past 100,000 transactions per second in the future, and they say they're gonna do it. Yet, here comes Cardano to unfold its many heads and show its teeth, almost like Hydra at Hercules, and I am not even kidding when I say that. Cardano has a second layer called Hydra, literally, that sits on top of the existing blockchain. It's a bit like the express checkout at like a grocery store. The basic blockchain handles the people coming in to do their huge monthly shop, while Hydra handles the quick shops of 10 items or fewer. Each express does a checkout until it's like a processing pool that's called Hydra's head. Each head can process up to a thousand TPS. Not even Hercules nor Thanos himself can beat up a monster like that. Solana for real, we think you are a brave soul, but you haven't heard anything yet. We can debate this till I'm blue in the face, but I think you have already understood which is going to be the winner of this one. Anyway, let's give the soul a chance to come on. Solana could clear tens of thousands of transactions per second with an average trade costing of 0.00001, which would allow for a decentralized exchange that could be bigger and better than anything else that's ever existed in crypto before. That's super awesome. Yet we aren't talking about costs here, we're focusing on the need for speed. And Cardano has something out of this universe when it comes to speed. Remember the Hydra of Cardano that we mentioned earlier, well, it isn't the same as the mythological monster, you know, when you have to shut down one head, it spawns two more and so on and so forth. It's way scarier. Each user who connects to the network will generate 10 heads. So the more people using the network, the more processing power that it ultimately has. Now remember that when we said each head has a processing power of 1000 TPS, imagine if just 100 users join the network. That's 10 heads per user, which means that there's a total of 1000 heads. So 1000 Hydra heads would be able to process 1 million TPS. Solana will have to fight alone against a monster that keeps spawning 10 heads for every user. If this was a video game, Soul would need to get some kind of GTA hacking code in order to win. Hey, don't get mad at me for giving the win to Cardano in this regard. We can talk about investment, projects, applications, smart contracts, and all of that. Yet when it comes to speed, it seems like Cardano has everything already mapped out. Sorry guys, but we all have to see the blood on the wall here. I like Solana a lot for the kind of decentralization that it is trying to achieve and bring into the DeFi world. And I am hopeful that once they pass their beta phase, that they will most likely surprise us with a lot more cool stuff 
that we didn't see coming or anticipate. With all that being said, that was it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your opinions in the comments down below on which is better, Solana or Cardano. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video here in the top right corner on Polkadot versus Solana. I will see you guys in that video now. Crypto Renegade out.